Welcome to Auburn's greatest games. Among Auburn people, one ne only needs say punt, bama, punt, or 17-16, and uh, they know immediately what you're talking about. I'm Phil Snow, along with David Housel, the Auburn athletic director and Auburn historian. David, tell us how that team came to be known as the Amazons. The term, I think he spelled it A-M-A-Z-I-N-S, apostrophe. Not amazing, but amazons, mm -hmm. because it was amazing what they were able to do week after week after week. Sullivan and Beasley were gone. It was supposed to be, what, a rebuilding year, I would guess. It was supposed to be a rebuilding year, and I'll never forget what our good friend Ed Shera, who was the Southeastern sports editor for the Associated Press, wrote in August of that season. The biggest change in the Southeastern Conference power structure this year will be the demise of Auburn. I can assure you, to this day, <laughs> Ed Shera still has to eat those words, the demise of Auburn in 1972. You remind him occasionally. Huh? Every time I see him, he says, I know, I know, I know, the demise of Auburn. Uh, this was a truly amazing football team.
Throughout the early going, defense held the upper hand. Neither Auburn nor Alabama could muster a first down in the game's first four possessions. With 7.56 left in the quarter, Alabama took over on its own 20. On third and eight, the Crimson Tide attempted a rare pass. It was picked off by David Langer at the 35, giving Auburn great field position. The Tigers also stayed mostly on the ground. Senior tailback Terry Henley shouldered the load, carrying five straight times on this possession. The drive finally stalled at the Alabama five. Gardner Jett came on to attempt a short field goal, but a bad snap ended Auburn's best threat of the quarter. Okay, uh, it seemed as though Auburn was just kind of hanging on for the first three quarters of this football game. It, that's my recollection. Of it. That was typical and characteristic of that particular Auburn football team. They would hang on and hang on and fight, scratch and claw. And uh, some way, somehow, they found a way to win. Don't you think Coach Jordan was one of the greatest underdog coaches of all time? No doubt about it. His team struck best from the underdog role. And this, is, this whole team, in particular, this football game, is another example of that. Nobody believes in you. Nobody thinks you can do it. Nobody gives you any credit. Let's go out there and show them. So uh, we move now back into the uh, second quarter of play. And the and, uh, and an Auburn team still doggedly hanging on, waiting for something to happen.
Alabama finally got a drive going early in the second quarter. This was the era of the wishbone, and the Crimson Tides was as good as anyone's. The Crimson Tide pounded away at the Auburn defensive front. On third and four at the Auburn 20, Alabama took the inside handoff for nearly nine yards and a key first down. Finally, on third and goal from the two, Alabama took it over right guard for the touchdown. But the extra point was not automatic. As if to foreshadow what was to come, Roger Mitchell blocked the kick and Alabama led just six to nothing. Auburn's offense continued to sputter throughout the quarter. Chris Linderman, Terry Henley, and James Owens just couldn't crack Alabama's solid defense. But the Crimson Tide offense fared little better against Auburn's defenders. Bill Newton, Ken Burnage, and Dave Beck led the charge. Late in the quarter, the Tigers forced Alabama to punt from its own 38. With just under three minutes left in the half, Auburn would have time for one more drive. David Langner's return set up the Tigers first and 10 at their 26 with 2.41 left. But disaster struck on the very first play from scrimmage. With time at a premium, the Tigers elected to go to the air. Sophomore quarterback Randy Wall's pass was overthrown right into the arms of an Alabama defender. He returned the interception 28 yards to the Auburn 13-yard line. An Alabama touchdown before the half would severely cripple Auburn's morale. But the Amazons would not go down easy. The defense held its ground on three straight plays, forcing the Crimson Tide to attempt a 24-yard field goal. It was good but Auburn averted disaster and trailed just nine to nothing at the half. We've all heard uh, in big games, it's the kicking game, David. Never has the kicking game, uh, the importance of the kicking game been el uh, better illustrated than this game. As long as football is played in Auburn, the three words, punt, bama, punt, will emphasize the importance of the kicking game. But most people have forgotten over the years that those two punts were only two of four kicks that were blocked on that particular day. Mm -hmm. You just saw Roger Mitchell block the Alabama extra point, and we also partially blocked a third Alabama punt early in the game. So without a doubt, the football game turned on the kicking game that particular day. And that first, uh, like you say, the first blocked extra point because the final was 17-16. That was a vital part of that football game. You're exactly right, but at the half, Auburn clearly had to do something to move the football. We had eight yards rushing, eight yards total offense in the whole first half. Alabama had 112 yards total offense in the first half. Uh, they were going to be happy to win the game nine to nothing, 16 to nothing, but Auburn had to move the football to get back in the game. We thought we had to move the football, and when in reality, we just had to let Alabama have it more often and force them into punt formation more often. Mm. As we get back into the game, again, the situation was that uh, Alabama folks were waiting for the wishbone offense to explode into a big victory, but it is a victory that never came. Once again, Gary Sanders with Gusty Year out at Legion Field in Birmingham. Let's get in that station break that we missed earlier. We'll pause now 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Auburn Football Network. 
The twin voices of Alabama, WAPI AM and WAPI FM Stereo in Birmingham. All right, the Auburn Tigers with the option will receive the ball. And Alabama will kick off and defend the south goal with the wind at their back as we start the third quarter. Alabama went uh, some 71 yards for a touchdown after an Auburn field goal attempt went astray on a bad snap from center. Alabama took over to 29. They then got a field goal after an intercepted pass. One of the ironic statistics, each team has thrown the ball one time. And they've not completed any, and both have been intercepted. Terry Davis's only pass of the day was intercepted by David Langner. Randy Wall's only pass of the day intercepted by Lanny Norris. That doesn't mean they haven't tried to throw. Auburn certainly has tried to thry, throw more than that. In any case, here we go. Greg Gant will kick off. It's going to be David Langner and Mike Fuller deep for Auburn. And a kick is going to hit it to five. Bounce into the end zone to Mike Fuller. He's out on the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Fuller down the sideline. 25 just about got away at the 28-yard line. But was knocked down over there by Robin Carey. Robin Carey, a junior from Greenwood, South Carolina, who's been running back punch today for Alabama, was in sort of a wide safety position, and he took care of uh, Little Fuller, Mike Fuller of Mobile, 5'11", 178 sophomore, just before he uh, had a chance to break into the open at the 28. So it's first and 10 Auburn on their own 28-yard line as we go to work in the third quarter. Sandy Cannon is wide to the right side. Gossam is wide left. Spivey is the tight end. Walls has Henley and Rusty Fuller behind him. Pitch to Henley on a power sweep. Henley's to the 30, to the 32. Henley is going to get about four yards out to the 32-yard line. Bottom of the pile for Alabama is Wayne Hall, a junior from Huntsville, Alabama. So a four-yard gain for Terry Henley. Second down and six to go. Walls just took the snap, turned around, pitched it back to Henley, and then led the blocking himself. Second and four. We're just underway with the third quarter. Alabama has a touchdown, a blocked extra point, and a field goal for nine points. Here's Andy Walls giving to Henley inside over tackle, and Henley is knocked forward out to about the 33 or 4-yard line. Not much running room for Terry Henley that time. Mark him at the 34, a gain of two more. And from there, it's third down now, and four to go. So third and a long four for the Auburn Tigers here on their first possession of the second half. Alabama had won the opening toss and took the opening kickoff, gave the ball up. Now Auburn with the option taking the ball and uh, on a third down and four. Gossam is right. Sandy Cannon is left. Randy Walls is pitching to Henley, trying to go wide. And John Mitchell would not allow it, turned him in. And when he turned in, he ran into the arms of Mike Raines. And it's no gain, fourth and four for the Auburn Tigers. Fourth and four as John Mitchell, the defensive end, would not allow Henley to get outside where he wanted to go. McKinney comes out of the game and Robin Carey goes deep. McKinney had been the punt returner earlier this year for Alabama, but he suffered an injury, and so now Carey is deep. David Beverly in punt formation on his own 18-yard line, awaiting the snap from center. It's a good snap. He's got only one man rushing him. A kick is away. It's going to hit at the 40, 30. A good Auburn bounce to the 25 and out of bounds on the 23-yard line. Alabama will take over there. Timeout on the field. The score, Alabama 9 and Auburn nothing continued its winning record of personal service and security, which started in 1888. First Today, Alabama, in the age of numbers, Steiner Bank still the furnishes the same personal service on which the bank was founded. Every customer is important as a person, not a number. You can talk about your banking needs with a Steiner who believes that every account, large or small, deserves personal consideration. Visit Steiner Bank on your next trip downtown on 3rd Avenue North between Burgers and Blacks. Open Saturday mornings to serve you better. Member FDIC, Steiner Bank. Line. That looks like enough for an Alabama first down. He was originally hit back uh, behind the line of scrimmage, but he broke a tackle. Wilbur Jackson doing some good running, and he may be close enough for a measurement. No, as they're indicating now, first down Alabama. Mike Neal and Ken Burnage finally combined to make this play for Auburn. So Alabama has the first first down of the second half, and I believe the eighth first down in the ball game. Dyer is very wide right, and uh, Wheeler is split a few yards on the left. Davis missed his handoff, kept the ball himself, got over the 35 to the 36 or 7. I think he wanted to go to Bichelia that time, but Bichelia was by him before he got turned around, and he missed his handoff, so Davis just kept it himself. Got a couple of yards, maybe three now they give him. From the 34 out to the 37, a three-yard gain. Bob Newton was there to knock him down, along with Ken Burnage. 
It'll be second down and seven. Alabama gaining three on a broken play. Wheeler split left. Wishbone backfield. Terry Davis. Long count. Here he is, finally giving to Wilbur Jackson, trying to go outside, spun away from a tackle, but then fell down. As Luca got out there and turned him in, he made a spin and got away from Luca, but fell as he made that spinning motion and lost. Well, now they're going to give him the 38-yard line, so he gained one. It'll be third down now, and uh, six yards to go for Alabama. Jackson has great speed. He's got good moves, and goodness, he's grown since the football season started. They have him listed at 207. I think now he's about 225, and he's a tough running back. All right, here's a possession down for Alabama, third and six. Wide out is left, fake to the fullback, wanting to throw. Terry Davis, Sibley after him, hit him as he threw it long, and it's far overthrown, incomplete, and pass interference is going to go down. Pass interference is going to go down at the Auburn 41, and Wayne Wheeler helped call that one. Wayne Wheeler made a lot of motions, and... Uh, pointed and hollered and jumped and the official came running in through the pass interference call first and 10 Alabama on the Auburn 41. So Auburn gets hit with pass interference and Butch Lambert who is working on the near sideline here came running in with his pass interference flag and Alabama has the first down on the Auburn 41 yard line as Davis was trying to go to Wheeler. Here's Bichelia inside for a couple of yards over the 40 down to about the 37 yard line. And they're going to mark him a 36 as they give him every inch of progress. That is a five-yard gain for Steve Bichelia in the middle of the pile. Bill Newton and Eddie Welsh for Auburn. Second down and a rather long five. He actually gained about four and a half. 10.45 to play in the third period. Alabama nine, Auburn nothing. Crimson tied with the football. And Wheeler is wide to the left side. Wishbone all the way. They've been in the wishbone today. Have not gone to that eye that we saw last year against the Tide. Long, long count. Now Davis fakes to Jackson. He's going to try to throw back against the grain. He's got a man out there who caught it at the 23 as Luca fell down and got out to the 20-yard line. Was knocked out of bounds on the 20. A great catch. Luca was in position but then slipped and fell. And that's Joe Labou who caught the ball. Terry Davis threw that thing very, very high in the air. And as Luca turned and looked into the sun for the ball, he fell down. First and 10 Alabama on the Auburn 20-yard line. Gary, uh, Luca was to have the running back, Labou, out of the backfield. He had him covered pretty well, but it looked like Luca got turned around, and when he looked back, I don't know whether the sun was in his eyes or what, but he lost the football, and it was a completion for the first down. First and 10 Alabama on the Auburn 20. The tide on the march with the help of a pass interference call. Wishbone, here comes Terry Davis. He's throwing again, and he's going in the end zone, overthrowing Wayne Wheeler. Johnny Simmons going after the ball. Now... Simmons is pointing for a little pass interference. And Dave Beck is now talking to the official, saying, hey, Butch, it works both ways. But we aren't going to see that call. And so it's second down and 10. Interference is a two-way street. The defensive man has a chance to go after the ball equally. And uh, Johnny Simmons was getting bumped pretty good by Wayne Wheeler that time. Just a moment ago, I guess Simmons made the mistake. He didn't ask for the call. Wheeler requested it, and he got it. Here's second down and 10. Alabama on the Auburn 20. Wide out left is Wheeler. Wishbone backfield. Long count again. Davis to Bichelia inside. And he got over the 20 to the 18. Not much running room there. Welsh, Sibley, Bill Newton, Bob Newton all in on the play. Give him uh, two, now well, three as they unpile at the 17. It'll be third and seven. Just a moment ago, Alabama had the third and six. And uh, we're successful with the interference call. So here's third down and seven for the Crimson Tide on the Auburn 17. Big play in the ball game. Here early in the third quarter. Wheeler is wide right. Terry Davis he is going to roll the option. He's coming to the near side on the option. Kept it himself. 15, 10, 5. Out of bounds at the 1. Out of bounds at the 1 as Johnny Simmons got him. And Terry Davis, who's so dangerous on that option, just slipped around the corner that time. And Gusty, the pursuit, got cut off. That's right. They hit Alabama, of course, has that great offensive line. And with a wishbone, they've got one offensive back leading the way. I believe it was Wilbur Jackson that time. When he saw Davis wanted to keep the ball, he cut inside and made a block. And Davis made a fine run. First and goal to go, Alabama. Just out, well, inside the Auburn one. Here's Davis on the sneak. Flags down. He's in the end zone. Flags down. Illegal movement against Alabama is the original signal. Illegal movement against Alabama, I believe. And so Terry Davis, who is sneaking 
and was in the end zone is uh, now talking to the referee James Artley and getting an explanation he will not even let him step off the penalty now he's going to get out of his way and let him march out five yards so uh, Alabama had first and goal inside the one now they're going to be out inside the uh, five just about five and a half yards away they were so close to a touchdown about two feet an illegal shift if you will they did not come to their full set count I don't believe before they went into that quarterback sneak so now it's first and goal at just outside the five Alabama catching the penalty Wheeler wide left wishbone Terry Davis and he fakes to Bichelle gives to Wilbur Jackson touchdown Jackson goes all the way in for the score Wilbur Jackson scoring it's 15 to nothing and the point after attempt coming is Bill Davis of Columbus Georgia well you never know how big that pass interference call was Alabama was in the third down and six situation inside their own 35 and when they threw the ball and got the pass interference call on request while well, that made it first and 10 on the Auburn 41 Terry Davis will hold Bill Davis to attempt the point after kick is up the kick is good time out on the field the score is Alabama 16 and Auburn nothing all right Greg Gant will kick off for the University of Alabama Mike Fuller and David Langner deep for Auburn 16 to nothing Alabama leading now the point spread on this game was 16 points here's Gant's kick deep in the end zone out of the end zone a touchback Langner didn't even try to catch that ball he was back nine yards deep and let it sail over his shoulder so Auburn will take over first and ten on the 20 now trailing by 16 two touchdowns an extra point in the field goal this Auburn offense is going to have to open up they're going to have to start throwing the ball run the option play some and I believe you're going to see Alabama's defense loosen up they've been in a split six and a five two most of the first half and part of this second half but now that they know the pressure's on the Auburn offense, I believe they're going to loosen up soon. All right, Fuller is in there, Mike Fuller, instead of Terry Henley, and Auburn is in a pro set with a split backfield. Here comes Fuller on a little reverse, trying to get wide. Dodge one man at the 20, 25, 28-yard line. Mike Fuller from Mobile gets out to the 28-yard line, as that was something we called earlier a reverse draw, Gusty, I think, in an earlier game. And it's the same play again, and now John Mitchell seems to be down and perhaps injured for Alabama in a timeout taken for the time being he just apparently had the wind knocked out of him they're going to send in the freshman Leroy Cook of Abbeville at defensive end and uh, Terry Henley has come back in the game for Auburn second down and two ball on the 28 yard line so Cook is in at the right defensive end Croyle moves over to the left side Henley and Owens behind walls Dawson wide right Cannon wide left second and two James Owens out to the 30 yard line and pushed back but he has his first down Chuck Strickland is there along with Randy Hall defensively for Alabama first and 10 Auburn across the 30 yard line and that is Auburn's second first down in the ball game and their first first down of the second half second first down of the game for the Auburn Tigers with 847 remaining here in the third period 16 to nothing Alabama leads Cannon is wide left Gossam is wide right Randy Walls he is going to run an option pitch back to Terry Henley Henley trying to go wide and he's not going to get anything he fumbled the ball Alabama's got it let's see was the ball dead or not Henley fumbled we've had no indication no the ball was dead before it got away from Henley Randy Hall recovered it for Alabama but the ball was dead before it was recovered Gary Leroy Cook this freshman defensive end continues to impress me we saw him last week against the Auburn freshman he did a great job super lineman on that play he made walls pitch the ball commit himself and then pursued the runner and made a tackle on Henley Cannon is wide right Gossam is wide left second down and 10 here's a quick pass in the flat to Cannon he's got it at the 35 out near the 40 yard line very close to a first down Sandy Cannon knocked down out there by Andy Cross the senior from Birmingham at linebacker and where they mark him he's going to be approximately one half yard short of the first down Gates is coming in and Spivey out at tight end Cannon will stay in third and less than a yard to go for the Auburn Tigers ball right on the Auburn 40 and they don't even need to get to the 41 they have much less than a yard to go third down and short and let's see what Randy Walls is going to do here. He fumbled the ball, got it back, and fought forward for the first down. He fumbled a snap from center but pulled it in and got the first down. First and 10 Auburn on the 41-yard line. 
Well, that's making the best of a bad situation there because Randy Walls did not handle the snap from center and still made his first down. It looked like Walls wanted to get out from under the center a little bit before he had the ball. He backed up. The ball kind of went into the air. He got it back and made the first down. It was a fine play on the part of Walls for, for the circumstances. John Mitchell has just returned to the game at defensive end for Alabama, and the freshman is out, Leroy Cook. Here's Randy Walls back, faking to Henley, wanting to throw, going very long, downfield for Tom Gossam, out of bounds. Gossam couldn't get to the ball at the 25, and Gusty, it appeared that Gossam had some room there. I think he may have gotten behind a defender, but Walls' pass in this wind drifted out of bounds, and Gossam had no chance to catch it. I believe you're right, and the wind is very stiff. You can see the flag blowing briskly. Uh, it's in Auburn's face, and Gossam looked like he had a step or two on the defender, but the pass went out of bounds. Second down and 10. Rob Spivey is back in, and uh, Mike Gates goes out at tight end. Second and 10. Auburn on their own 41-yard line, trailing 16-0. Gossam is wide to the left side. Wide right is Cannon. Here is Randy Walls wanting to throw a broken play, and John Mitchell has got him clear back to the 31-yard line. That time, Walls went to the right, and the rest of his backs went left. And uh, as to who made the mistake, why... I guess only the coaches will know for sure. I certainly can't say because Mac Lorendo had gone the same way. The veteran tackle had gone the same way as Walls and tried to keep Mitchell off, but Mitchell got around him, made the play, and it's going to be third down now and 20 all the way back to 31. Minus 10 for Randy Walls on that play. Terry Henley goes out of the game. We'll have a new tailback in there for Auburn. I believe it is uh, Chris Linderman. Linderman and Owens lined up behind Randy Walls on third and 20. And here goes Linderman in motion to the left side, and Walls is rolling right, wanting to throw back. Now he's going up the middle for Spivey. It's almost intercepted by Lanny Norris at the 40-yard line, and Spivey's mad at himself, thinks he should have had it, but Norris got in his way. That was at the Alabama 40 as they tried to go to the tight end, Spivey. Norris has an interception earlier today and really had good position on that football, although Spivey... As I say, apparently thought to himself that he should have gotten there and gotten the ball. Frankly, from up here, I don't think Spivey had a chance. I think Auburn is fortunate that uh, Norris did not intercept. In punt formation is David Beverly. And again, Robin Carey is a single safety waiting near the Alabama 30-yard line. As Beverly awaits the snap from center, it is a good snap. He's got a lot of time. His kick is away, and it's a beauty into the wind. Carey's retreating to the 15, caught it over his shoulder at the 12, ran down to the 9, comes back to the 11, and is held. Now he got away at the 15, and is going to be ruled out of bounds over here on the 18-yard line. Alabama will take over. Tom Gossam made the play. Timeout on the field to score. Alabama 16 and Auburn nothing. Burgers and Blacks, member FDIC. Here's first down Alabama on the 18 on the snap. Terry Davis dropped the ball and dropped on it himself for a loss back to the 17-yard line. Davis just dropped the snap from center that time, backed up and dropped on it himself. Minus one yard on the play, and it's going to be second and 11 now. Alabama on their own 17. That was a 54-yard punt by David Beverly a moment ago into the win. All right, here is second down 11. The wishbone with one wide out. And Davis is going to roll the option to the right side. Davis cut up himself, got to the 20. Now he's going to be hit and knocked down, and it's Dave Beck once again. Dave Beck making a play at the 19-yard line on Terry Davis, and Davis desperately was looking for someone to pitch the ball to, but when he cut up field, his uh, trailing back got up ahead of him trying to block. The ball at the 19. It'll be third and nine to go for Alabama now. Five minutes and five seconds left in the third period and time becoming a factor because Auburn is three scores behind, 16 to nothing. Wood, or George Pugh is split wide now to the left side, and here is Michelia inside, running through one man at the 22, got out to the 24-5, and Neal knocked him down there. Mike Neal making a play at the 25-yard line where it's fourth and three to go for Alabama, and here's Greg Gant coming into the game. Pat Raines also running in. He snaps the ball on punts. David Langner going deep for Auburn with Johnny Simmons, the up back. Auburn looking into the sun and the wind at Alabama's back in the third quarter. Auburn will have those advantages in the fourth quarter. 4.26 remaining to play in the third period. Gant waiting for his snap. He's got a good one. He's got time and his kick is away. Looks like a beauty. Sailing very nicely and Langner let it hit at the 8, 10, 5. Still rolling and is down inside the 5-yard line on the 3. Auburn will have it on the three-yard line. Timeout on the field. The score is Alabama 16 and Auburn nothing. 
They mark the ball on the three. First down. Here's Rusty Fuller on a quick handout over the handoff over the five to the six yard line. Rusty Fuller, a fullback, going quickly out to the six. A gain of three. Second and seven. That was a 72 yard punt by Greg Gant. And of course, a good mud, a bit of it on the roll. It hit it about the 19, and the Alabama pursuit got down and stopped it before it got in the end zone. Second down and seven to go. Auburn on their own six yard line. Butler is now in the game, wide right. Cannon is wide left. Here's Henley on a delay, and there's no room for Terry Henley. Is a good play defensively made by Andy Cross. 5'10", 204, senior from Birmingham. And Cross knocks down Henley for a loss of one back to the five. It'll be third down and eight to go. And here's Gossam checking in and Spivey going out. And it looks like this time Auburn will not have a tight end. Well, Butler will move into tight end. It'll be Butler, Gossam, and Cannon. All three in there as eligible pass receivers. Henley and Fuller. It's third down and eight from five-yard line. Randy Walls has his club out now with wideouts either side. Gives on a reverse to Butler. And Butler is not going to have much running room. He got a yard or two out to about the seven-yard line. And big John Mitchell would not be blocked on the play. you got to give Mitchell a lot of credit there, Gusty. The reverse came around the tight end around. Kind of an inside wingback reverse, if you will. And had they gotten Mitchell out of there, there had been some running room. You're right. Mitchell's done a great job all day. He got hurt and went out for two or three plays, but he's been back in, and he's been awesome. Alabama's doing what they have best. They're playing a lot of football players. They, they've got their second-team defense in there now. Here is Beverly kicking from his own end zone. Alabama rushing to kick. He got it away. A low kick that hits at the Auburn 35 and goes out of bounds at the 38, and Alabama will take over there. So Beverly had to really rush it. Alabama had a had a heavy rush on. He had to hurry his kick. Hit a low line drive that went out of bounds on the 38. That's only a 29 yard kick. So you subtract 29 from 72. And that's what Auburn lost on that exchange of punts. And of course the kicking game always important in any football game. Alabama getting the better of it there. The Auburn kicking game has been very, very strong today with the exception of the field goal attempt. And that was in a snap. Where the snap was uh, bounced back. First and 10 Alabama on the Auburn 38. Terry Davis gives it to Joe Labou, 35, 30, and down he goes on a 29. It looked that time to me, Gusty, like Labou delayed a little bit as he got the ball and let his blocking do some work for him, and there was plenty of running room. Well, Labou's an old pro runner. He's real. He, he has good moves. He follows his blocking well. He's not the fastest man on the team, but he has above average speed. He, he made a good run on that play. Second down and one. Alabama on the Auburn 29. And here is Bichelia spinning inside to the 25. Flag down. Penalty marker down on the 25. It would have been an Alabama first down, but I believe a holding call. That's where the flag went down. It is holding against Alabama from the point of the infraction, the 28-yard line. They're going to go back 15 yards. Let's pause right now. Ten seconds for station identification. This is the Auburn Football Network. The twin voices of Alabama. All right, a holding violation, 15 yards, moves the ball from the point of the foul at 28 out to the 43. It is second down now and 15 to go. Alabama had the first down made except for the holding penalty. Now it's second and 15. And let's see what Terry Davis is going to do. He's going to give it to Bichelia inside. Bichelia's into about the 40. They may give him the 39 when they unpile. He's in a, he's in a big pile, both Newtons and Burnage there. Ken Burnage, Bill and Bob Newton. And they're going to mark him down inside the Auburn 40. Call it a four-yard gain. Third down, 11 to go, Alabama. Third and 11. A minute and 15 seconds left to play in the third period from Legion Field in Birmingham. Alabama 16, Auburn nothing. Wayne Wheeler is wide left. Wishbone, they've been in a wishbone all day. Terry Davis has been a quarterback all day. And he's back to throw. He's uh, chasing, uh, being chased by Sansbury. Now he's going to run, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds over here on about the 38-yard line. It was Newton and Neal who got him after Sansbury forced him to pull the ball down. Danny Sansbury penetrated and forced him to pull the ball down and not throw it. And then as he tried to get to the sideline, Neal and uh, Bill Newton got him out of bounds on the 38-yard line, which ironically enough is the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down now and 10 to go, and again, we're going to see Greg Gant attempt a long field goal. I say again, he didn't attempt it before because they got delay of game. This will be a 55-yard field goal attempt. He was going to try a 52 earlier. This will be a 55-yard attempt, and Auburn just jumped offside. Sibley, let's see if he was drawn offside or not. 
Shively is pointing. Shively came flying through, and he was pointing at the Alabama side of the line. And now let's see. The officials are talking about it. Let's see which way they're going to go. They're going to call it against Auburn. So instead of fourth and ten, it'll be fourth and five. Move the line of scrimmage into the 33. Illegal procedure, the signal against Auburn. There was a good deal of discussion. Now he's going to put the ball right on the 40. It'll be a 50-yard attempt. So instead of a 55-yard attempt, Greg Gann is going to attempt a 50-yard field goal with the wind at his back in the final minute of the third quarter. Here is the snap. The kick is on its way. Let's see. It is long enough, but it's wide left. No good. Timeout on the field. The score, Alabama 16 and Auburn nothing. It was Saturday morning. Here's first down Auburn and the pitch out to Terry Henley and Henley comes wide over the 20 up to the 25 and then he's hit very hard and knocked out to 25 by Lanny Norris and by Mike Raines who was pursuing the play. Raines and Norris and now Henley is going to lead the game and Linderman's going to come in. Five yard gain for Terry Henley out to the 25. It's second down and five and the clock running at 20 seconds. Auburn on their own 25 trailing 16-0. Sandy Cannon is going to split wide left. Tom Gossam wide right. Rusty Fuller and Chris Linderman behind. And here's Fuller on a quick handoff over the 30. Still running to the 34. He broke two or three tackles. First down Auburn on the 34-yard line. Nice run by Rusty Fuller. And the clock is going to stop on that first down with four seconds. But I don't believe we'll get another play. The minute they start the clock, four seconds, three, two, one. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Alabama 16, the Auburn Tigers nothing. Alabama kicked off to Auburn to begin the second half. Sophomore Mike Fuller, who would become one of the greatest return men in Auburn history, took the kickoff and returned it to the 28th. The Tigers quickly discovered that Alabama's defensive front would be just as stingy as they had been in the first half. Auburn failed to get a first down and punted the ball to the Crimson Tide. Alabama took over on its own 22 after a 45-yard David Beverly kick. The Crimson Tide came out with a run, as expected. But after picking up one first down, they went to the air. A costly pass interference call moved the ball into Auburn territory. Two plays later, the pass hurt the Tigers again, as Alabama gained 16 yards to the 20. Now, with the goal line in sight, Alabama went back to its strength, power running. A 16-yard run took the ball to the one. Alabama appeared to score one play later, but an illegal motion penalty took the ball back to the six. The Tide was unaffected by the penalty and simply scored on a six-yard run on the very next play. Alabama, after its best drive of the game, led 16 to nothing. Well, based on that 16-point uh, lead and uh, also on what the Auburn offense had been able to do up to that point, this game was over, it appeared. It was over. Some Birmingham radio station had picked up the Southern Cal-Notre Dame game. I believe Southern Cal was number one in the nation. Alabama had Auburn under control, 16 to nothing. Auburn had had a valiant effort. They had been uh, a game opponent for three quarters, but the game was over. People in the press box were already beginning to say, well, the tide will move up to number one. But uh, it's not over till it's over, as everyone found out that particular day. Once again from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, Gary Sanders along with Gusty Yearout, our engineer, Gail Cottle, and our spotters, Kes Fabian and Bill Wingard. And we're ready for the fourth quarter of action. The Auburn Tigers trailing the University of Alabama 16 to nothing. Gary, Auburn's going to have to generate some offense, not just because they're behind 16 to nothing, but they've got to change this field position. They haven't had field position since late in the first quarter, and it's been a deciding factor. If Alabama does make a mistake, Auburn's so backed up they can't take advantage of it. 
First and ten, Auburn on their own 34 now. Randy Walls is going to pitch to Linderman, trying to come wide. Linderman 35, 38, 39-yard line. John Mitchell pursuing the play, and also the linebacker, Mike DeBose. DeBose is from Op, Alabama, 6 feet, 208, and a sophomore. And, of course, Mitchell, the big senior from Mobile, a junior college transfer, making the play. Linderman picked up five at second and five to go on to 39. Just underway with the fourth quarter. 16 to nothing, Alabama leading. Gossam is wide right. Randy Walls is going to give it inside to Fuller, and he fought his way through a tackle. Got on out to about the 43 or 4, and where they're going to mark him. He's just shy of a first down. It'll be third and about one. Third and about one, and now here's John Croyle limping for the University of Alabama. And I don't know if they're going to replace him or not. They have sent in another defensive back. And here comes Auburn with tight end. Gates in and Cannon out. Now Alabama's going to call a timeout because of Croyle's injury, and they didn't see it from the bench. So the Tide will take a timeout. Now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Are they going to charge him? Yes, they have been charged with a time. Well, now the official says it's his timeout, and they're going to let the substitution come in for Croyle. That is uh, Leroy Cook. Alabama did not want to use a timeout, apparently, at that point, and uh, Croyle is being helped off the field now as he uh, is really, uh, really appears to have problem with his left knee. Royals had a history of, uh, of knee injury, and so he's out of the game. The officials time out. It's not charged to either team. Alabama still has three left in the half. Auburn has two, and it will be first and ten, or excuse me, third down and less than a yard for Auburn. Third and less than a yard on the Auburn 43-yard line. They need to 44. And here comes Linderman on a slant, and he ran through McMakin for the first down to the 45. David McMakin was right there keying on the tailback again, but Linderman lowered his head and blasted through McMakin for a yard and a half and a first down. Auburn first and 10 on their own 45. Clock running at 13.54, and here comes Terry Henley in and Chris Linderman out at tailback. Alabama will play Texas in the Cotton Bowl New Year's Day in Dallas. Auburn on December 30th will play Colorado in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Gossam is wide right. Everyone else is in tight. And Randy Walls faking to Henley, wanting to throw. Rush after him. He dodges one man. Still on the move now. Running and caught from behind and knocked down. And it's a big tackle who ran him down from behind. It's, or that's that end. Leroy Cook, that freshman that Gusty Yearout was talking about earlier. And Leroy Cook got Randy Walls all the way back on the 38-yard line. So that's a loss of seven yards. Walls was under heavy pressure from the rush, but he ducked under and got away for a moment then tried to scramble and as he did why Cook ran him down. Linderman in Henley out at tailback. Second down and 17 to go on minus seven on that attempt to pass by Randy Walls. Here's a pitch to Linderman. The sweep again and Linderman is over the 40, 45 back to the original line of scrimmage. So he got the seven yards that Walls lost and it's going to be third down and 10 to go. Ball at the 45, third down and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. Possession down here with 12.36 remaining in the football game. Alabama 16, Auburn 0. And Gossam is going to split out wide to the right side. Third down and 10 to go. Gossam is the only wide out. Walls pitching back to Linderman, trying to sweep. He's out to midfield, 45. Got his first down, down to the Alabama 42. Uh, the 41-yard line, a quick pitch, and Linderman got outside in a hurry and got a good block down there from Tom Gossam. Wayne Hall finally pursued and made the play. Bob Farrier pulled out from his guard position to lead the way and threw a nice block on the linebacker who was pursuing to try to stop Linderman, and Linderman made a fine run. Auburn first and 10 on the Alabama, 41. Wind and the sun in Auburn's favor now. Wind at Auburn's back in Alabama's eyes and here is the give to Rusty Fuller right up the middle good fake by Walls that time but unfortunately for Auburn Skip Cabelius will have no part of it and Cabelius knocked down Fuller for a one yard gain to the 40 second and nine Rusty Fuller getting one yard straight ahead against the Alabama defense second and nine for the Tigers Auburn all in white with blue and orange trim Alabama in their red jerseys with the Red headgears and the white pants. And here a quick count. Walls back to throw. He ducks one man on the rush. Scrambling, now throwing upfield. Complete to Gossam inside the 30. Gossam is down to the 26-yard line. 
Randy Walls to Tom Gossam to the 26-yard line. That will be an Auburn first down, and Steve Wade, free safety from Dothan, made the play. That's seven first downs for Auburn. And now let's see, here's a, another man coming out of the game. Injured Randy Hall is coming out for Alabama, and replacing him is going to be Doug Faust to tackle. Randy Hall has been probably the most uh, consistent defensive player for Alabama. He's been in the backfield most of the day, and they're going to miss him out there. He looks like he's limping. Cannon is in now and will go wide left. Gossam is wide right. First down. Walls wanting to throw. Dodging the rush. Now throwing it out here in the flat. It is complete. And a nice tackle as Linderman caught the ball at the 18 and was hit immediately as he caught the ball by Bobby McKinney of Mobile. And they're going to mark him on the 19, actually. So a complete pass. Good for seven yards, second down and three. Walls to Linderman. And a good defensive play by Bobby McKinney a senior from Mobile, 5'11", 176. Second down, three to go for Auburn on the 19-yard line of Alabama. Gossam is wide right. Cannon is split about five yards to the left side. High backfield. Here's the pitch out to Linderman. He's in trouble. He's caught for a loss on a 26 as they fired the safety man, McMakin. They fired McMakin. Gusty, that's about the third time they have sent that strong safety, McMakin, into the Auburn backfield, and it's been successful for them. Nobody's picked him up all day, and, boy, that really hurt Auburn with a second down and, and short yardage. They're backed up now third and ten. So it'll be interesting to see what Randy Walls does. He's been quite effective here in the fourth quarter throwing the ball. Third down and ten. Cannon and Linderman are going to slot on the left side. Gossam is wide right. Owens the only back in there with uh, Randy Walls, and he gave it to Owens. And he got to the 24, and that's all. The element of surprise was there, but Owens ran right into a tackler as he got to the 24. It was Wayne Hall who was there. And so it's going to be fourth down after a two-yard gain, fourth and eight. And Gardner Jett is going to come on for a field goal attempt. Gardner Jett and Dave Beck coming into the game. And the point of uh, the kick will be the 32. It would be a 42-yard kick if good. 42 yards if good. And if it's not a fake. No, it is a kick. Jet is away on the kick. And let's see. It is good. It is good. So with timeout on the field, the score, Alabama 16, the Auburn Tigers 3. 32, I mean the Alabama 32-yard line. And it became fourth down and nine. Well, we didn't have much passing attack. Uh, our running attack, we had not gained a great de deal of yardage that afternoon, so what the heck were we going to do? We couldn't throw and we couldn't run. So uh, I called for Gardner Jett, a uh, little boy that weighed about 145 pounds. He had never kicked a field goal that long. I guess it was a shot in the dark. I remember calling Gardner over. I said, this is a little out of your range, isn't it, Gardner? And he said, no, sir, I can kick it. Well, uh, we made the decision to go for three, and uh, this is the only time in the history of the Auburn-Alabama series, to my knowledge, that both sides of Legion Field stood up and booed uh, for entirely different reasons. The Auburn crowd stood up and booed because they felt like perhaps we had quit. We felt we couldn't win the ball game. The Alabama side uh, stood up and booed because if we kicked it, that blew the line, so to speak, which was 14 points, and that would have cut it to three. <laughs> Brilliant coaching. <laughs> it, was a, <laughs> it was a strange circumstance, I guess, if you were sitting in the stands wondering, what is this man doing kicking a field goal? Truth is often stranger than fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but as it turned out, it worked out perfectly. So let's go back now to the uh, one of the most improbable and one of the greatest comebacks in college football in the final few minutes of a football game. All right, Auburn gets on the scoreboard with a field goal by Gardner Jett. 16 to 3, Wilbur Jackson and Joe LeBou are going to be deep for Alabama as Chris Wilson will kick off. Auburn had tried a field goal earlier, only a 22-yard attempt, but the snap from center didn't allow it. Now Alabama moves everyone up close expecting the onside kick. Wilson kicks it uh, fairly deep. And it's going to be Labou taking it on the goal line. A 5, 10, at the 15. He spins out over the 20, out to about the 23 or 4. Joe Labou to the 24, where Wilson, the kicker, got him. And also uh, David Hughes, a junior from Tampa, Florida. 
Gary, I heard some response from the crowd when Coach Jordan decided to go for the field goal. I think it was his only alternative. The only way Auburn can win this football game is to score two touchdowns and a field goal and hold Alabama with no points. So he's got to get the field goal sometime. That's true. It, uh, it's a three-score situation. Auburn now has one of them. And the next two would have to be touchdowns, and they would have to hold. Let's see what Terry Davis does on the option. Sandspree got him in the pursuit of Bill Newton. Sandspree got in there, and even though he was being blocked, he uh, reached over the blocker who had him down on the ground and pulled down Terry Davis on the option. Minus one on the carry, second down 11. As Terry Davis tried to run the option to the left side, and Sandspree would have no part of it. Clock is running and very much a factor. 8.40, 16-3, Alabama leading by 13 points. Second 11, here's Terry Davis to Wilbur Jackson. 25-30, out to the 34, first down. And Auburn didn't need that at all. They needed to hold and get the football back, and Jackson has just run for a first down to the 34-yard line. Alabama first and 10 to go. A slight counter, just a short delay, and a handoff to Jackson. He got inside. Found a soft spot. Was finally knocked down by Johnny Simmons in the secondary. First and 10 Alabama on the, their own 34. One wide out. Wheeler is left. Terry Davis he is going to give it to Bichelia inside. And he got over the 35 to the 36. Burnage is there for one. Sibley is there. Bob Newton. Bill Newton. All in on the play. So Bichelia gets two yards. Second down and eight to go. Clock is running at 7.57. 16 to 3 Alabama leads and Auburn needs a break. They need to make Alabama cough up the football or at least hold and get it back. Terry Davis wishbone running the option again. Sansbury just missed him this time. Now he pitches it out to Labou and Labou is knocked down as he gets up the field to about the 44 45 and it looks like another Alabama first down and Davis pitching late and I think the Auburn bench had some word about it being a forward lateral. Davis was very late in that throw, and all year they have been very, very close on that uh, on that pitch out to being a forward lateral. I think it's been called only once. At that time, it uh, apparently was not a forward lateral, so Alabama has the first and 10 on a 45. One wide out, split left. Wheeler, wishbone behind Davis, and here's Michelle inside for a couple of yards, maybe three, out to the 47 or 8. Alabama... In addition to making the first downs, eating up the clock, and that's exactly what they want to do. 7-10 now showing on the scoreboard clock. We're in the fourth quarter. Bill Newton making the play defensively. 16-3, Alabama by 13 points. Here is Wayne Wheeler wide right. Bichelia, Labou, and Jackson behind Terry Davis. Second down, and... Eight to go, and here is Labou trying to cut back against the green. Got to midfield, and Sibley got him right at the 50-yard line. Benny Sibley there to knock him down right at the 50. He started left and tried to cut back to the right. When he did so, Welsh and Sibley combined on him, and at the 50, it'll be third down and five, a big down. This is an interesting play here, third and five. This late in the ball game, Alabama doesn't want to put it in the air, give Auburn the opportunity of intercepting it, but they want to keep this drive going and eat this clock up. Right at midfield, third and five, Alabama. Wheeler is right. See what Terry Davis is going to do. Long count. Davis dropped the ball. Who got it? He fumbled, and I think Alabama got it back, but it will be a fourth down. Either Davis got on it or the guard, Montgomery. I don't know whether Davis got it or uh, not Montgomery, but uh, Buddy Brown. Either Buddy Brown or Terry Davis. It doesn't matter. They had a red shirt on the man who got on top of the ball. A half-yard loss to the Alabama side of the 50, and on fourth and five, Greg Gann is in to punt. Johnny Simmons is going back as a single safety. Mitchell and Langner on the line of scrimmage coming from either side to try to block the kick. Auburn trying to go after it. Here's a snap. They got it. Block kick. Ball's back to the 25. Picked up on the bounce at the 25-yard line, and in for a touchdown is David Langner. Now they're going to mark it down. I think Bill Newton blocked it. And now let's see what they're going to say. Touchdown. They haven't. They, the man dropped his hat. Butch Lambert dropped his hat back here. But let's see what they're going to say. We haven't had a ruling of a touchdown yet. They're picking up the hat. And now what are they talking about it? And I think it is going to be a score. They haven't put it on the scoreboard yet. The referee hadn't signaled it. But I think he's going to. 
We'll give credit to Bill Newton for blocking it. David Langner caught it on the bounce at about the 20 and ran it in for the score, and it is. Touchdown Auburn, 16-9. 16 to 9 and a point after attempt coming. Auburn loading up on the kick as we told you. 16 to 9, Dave Beck will hold the extra point. Very important. Very important here. And let's see. Snap, bad snap. Jet got the kick away anyhow and it's good. Even though it was a bad snap. Beck got it on the tee and Jet kicked it through. Timeout on the field. The score, Alabama 16 and Auburn 10. All right, five minutes and 30 seconds left. Alabama expecting the onside kick has everyone up except Joe, no, not LeBou. Who is it? Billingsley back at the 10. Randy Billingsley is alone at the 10-yard line. Everyone else is up close. Chris Wilson kicks it deep, and Billingsley is going to go back, and it's over his head and out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Alabama on the 20-yard line. A touchback as it went over Billingsley's head. And so now with 5.30, and you know, Gusty, I don't believe I have yet seen an official signal a touchdown on that play. Butch Lambert scared me to death when he dropped his hat on the 20-yard line as though he were going to mark the ball there. I thought it should be a touchdown, but you never know what the ruling will be. And uh, they finally, some one of the Auburn players, Gossam, picked up the hat and brought it to Mr. Lambert and gave it to him where he had marked. First and 10 at the 20. Here's Alabama. Terry Davis with a wishbone behind him. And he's going to keep it himself, run wide on the option. And he turns up, got to the 24-25 yard line. A lot of good pursuit. Auburn had several people out there, Sibley and Neal. Luca was wide, Sandsbury was wide, and it, but it's still a uh, five yard gain. Nice run by Terry Davis without really that much room. Second down and five to go. Would you think there's some fired up football players down there on that Auburn defense? I know a couple of fired up broadcasters for sure, not to mention some fans and everything. Here is second down and five. Wheeler is wide left. Alabama on their own 25, second and five from the wishbone. Long count. Give to Bichelia as he rode him inside for a yard, maybe two to the 27. Sandsbury is there. Sibley is there. Bill Newton is there. And, of course, only the film will tell for sure who blocked that punt. We're going to let Bill Wingard take the blame for giving it to Bill Newton, but Wingard is sure he saw Newton get it. I know Langer ran it in for the score. Here's a possession down at the 27, third and three, Alabama. Third and three, Wheeler is wide left. Davis keeping, trying to go wide, turning up, first down. He's up to the 31, 32, Dave Beck's got him. First down, Alabama. Davis is so very quick on the corner, Gusty. He's such a dangerous runner. He is, Gary, and I would imagine some of the depth is beginning to show out here. Alabama's run two teams on offense and two teams on defense. Auburn has kept their first team in both ways, offensively and defensively, and his quickness is beginning to show against the Auburn defense. Bill Luca is limping off the field, and Jim Sermons is now in at linebacker, replacing Luca. First and 10, Alabama on their own 32. We'll keep up with the clock for you. Here's Davis to Michelle inside, 35-37. Neal gets him, Beck and Sermons cover him at the 37-yard line, 3.53 and running is the story on the clock. Auburn down 16 to nothing at one point. It's now 16 to 10, Alabama leading by six points. But Auburn needs the football. The clock, 3.42. Second down, five to go for Alabama. They've been, they've ground out two first downs. They have second and five now. Auburn needs a big play. Here's Davis to Wilbur Jackson. Jackson up to the 41-42. Very close to a first down, depending on where they mark his progress. Close enough for a measurement, in fact. Close enough, in fact, for a measurement from the far sidelines. And, of course, the clock, Alabama would, I'm sure, be content just to keep running the ball and hang on to the uh, football. Auburn needs it back in the worst way. Let's see. Chains coming in from the sideline. Leave the first or third and very short. First down, Alabama. First down, Alabama at the 42. Crimson Tide, first and 10 on their own 42. They have now made three straight first downs since the Auburn kickoff. Auburn getting a block punt and scoring with it to make it a horse race once again. The Auburn defense has played magnificently. No matter what happens the rest of the way, they have been magnificent. All right, here's first and 10 at the 42. 
Here is Terry Davis to Bichelia, and he got a yard, maybe two, and not much. Not much as he tried to slant left, and that's the first time on first down that Auburn has been able to keep Alabama into a short yardage situation, and Sibley made the play. I think you're going to see a lot of Bichelia and Davis throughout the rest of the fourth quarter. They don't want to pitch the ball. They don't want to throw the ball. They don't want to try to give it to somebody beside those two runners. They want to make handling uh, a minimum thing. Second down and nine. Alabama on their own 43. Terry Davis. Long count. Running wide on the option. Davis turned up 45 and down he goes to the 47 yard line. Davis makes that very quick cut. And they're going to give him the 48 as they put him down. Third down and four to go. Bill Newton pursued the play and made the tackle. Third and four. Two minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. Big, big play here. Third and four. Alabama on their own 48-yard line. Clock at 2:10 and running. Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers right here head-to-head. -head. Third down, four. Terry Davis, long, long count. Now he gives. No, he's caught. He's got Rollins. Mike Neal. Mike Neal at the 42. And they fired Neal, and he got Terry Davis back at the 42-yard line. It'll be fourth and 10, Alabama. Fourth and 10 with a minute 46 showing on the clock and running. And Greg Gant has come in to punt. And now Auburn, I think, is going to take a timeout to stop the clock. Wait a minute. The clock is stopped. And is it going to be a charge timeout, or what is it? Let's see. Timeout. Uh, the Auburn Tigers. Auburn calls timeout with timeout on the field to score. Alabama 16, the Auburn Tigers 10. All right, here we go to fourth down. Fourth down and nine yards to go for the University of Alabama. And deep is Johnny Simmons. That means David Langner is up on the line of scrimmage again. Langner will be on the far right. Roger Mitchell on the left. And Auburn is again going after the kick, as you might imagine. Greg Gant standing on his own 30. Auburn will try to block it. Auburn going after it. Here's a good snap. It is blocked! It is blocked! It's caught on the run! It's caught on the run! He's going to score! David Langner! David Langner has scored! And Auburn has tied the game! And Roger Mitchell blocked the kick! Roger Mitchell blocked the kick! And it's 16 to 16! And the entire Auburn team has come out to get David Langner! Auburn has just blocked another kick! And that all-important extra point will be coming up. One minute and 34 seconds left. 16 to 16. Mitchell blocked it unbelievably. The ball bounced right up into the hands of David Langner again. And Langner went in from about the 28-yard line. And it's 16 to 16. One minute, 34 seconds left. And Auburn will attempt that all-important extra point. And as you may remember, when Alabama scored, the first time, the kick was blocked. The first touchdown was blocked, and Alabama led 6-0. And now, how big that point is, as Dave Beck will hold, Gardner Jett will attempt on one of the biggest point afters you ever want to see. What a big one. All right. Snap, kick. Good! Yeah! Good! With timeout on the field, the score is Auburn 17, Alabama 16. Football. From Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, this is Gary Sanders with Gus Fiera. Auburn has come back from 16-0 to lead 17-16. The time remaining, 1-34. One, One minute, 34 seconds left in the game. Chris Wilson will kick off for Auburn. Wilbur Jackson and Joe Labou are deep for Alabama. We may have to turn this over to Kess and Bell. <laughs> well, I don't know. You, you mentioned the Ole Miss game where you couldn't speak. I'm not sure I can quit talking. That's my problem. Here's Wilson ready to move on the ball. A minute and 34, and that's a lot of time. Let's see what happens. Wilson's kick. It's high. It's rather short. It is going to hit at the 10 and be out of bounds, and Auburn will be penalized five yards and uh, kick it over from the 35. It went out of bounds at the 10, and so Wilson will now kick from the 35-yard line. And of course, the clock did not move. It was not touched by any member of the receiving team. And with the wind at his back, Wilson will now kick from the 35. Little Gardner Jet, 5'9", what do they say here, 152 pounds, 
That might be an exaggeration. The senior from Atlanta, Georgia, has kicked two of the biggest extra points in his life and a field goal. And in all fairness, the extra point before this one, Dave Beck did a fantastic job of getting the ball on the tee on a bad snap. All right, here's Wilson ready to kick off again. A minute 34. It's certainly not over by a long, long shot. Here is Wilson's kick. This is a very good kick down the middle that LeBou is going to catch on the two. Five, ten, LeBou 15 going wide and hit at the 20. Still on his feet and down at the 21 as he is gang tackled at the 21 yard line. Evans is there and on the bottom of the pile, number 41, Lee Carpenter of Childersburg. Rusty Dean is also there. First and 10, Alabama on the 20. Well, just as you said, Gary, this football game isn't over yet. A lot of people thought Auburn was out of it. A lot of people thought Alabama was out of the Tennessee game when Tennessee was ahead of them late in the fourth quarter. They're an explosive football team and Auburn's going to play tough defensively. All right, Davis is out. He's got the wishbone, but wide outs either side this time. And Davis is wanting to throw in the flat. Tipped in the air. Incomplete. Neal almost got to it. Tipped by Sibley and Neal almost intercepted. Second down and 10. Let's pause. 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Auburn Football Network. All right, the clock is at 122. Second and 10, Alabama on the 20. They're out of the wishbone, into the eye backfield with a slot formation right. LeBou in the right slot. Second and 10. Davis running the option. Pitching back to Wilbur Jackson. Jackson going wide, 25, out of bounds at about the 30. Not quite a first down. He's out at the 29, and the clock stops as he went out of bounds at a minute and 13. Auburn's, uh, of course, Gusty, as you know, in a prevent defense, and that, that allows the run to pick up those eight and nine yards. That's right. They want to try to keep him in bounds, though. They knocked him out of bounds then and stopped the clock. Uh, and, of course, when he goes out of bounds, it does, like I say, stop the clock, and they want to keep him from, uh, they want to make him use as much time as possible. Excuse me, Gusty, I won't call on you again. I <laughs> forgot you're concentrating. Third and one, sneak by Terry Davis, first down Alabama, out to about the 33, and now Alabama will use a timeout to stop the clock. No, they, they stop the clock on the first down. They do not use a timeout. A minute and eight, they stop it just long enough to place the sideline markers, and Alabama's going to go without a huddle. Alabama goes to the 33 without a huddle, first and 10, now the clock has started again and is clicking at one, oh, at one minute right on the nose. Here's Davis rolling back, wanting to throw. Out in the flat, overthrown, incomplete, stopping the clock. And that's what he wanted to do. He was going for Wayne Wheeler. But I think really, uh, as soon as he saw Wheeler was covered, he threw it out of bounds to stop the clock. Second and 10. Alabama on their own 33-yard line. 55 seconds left in the football game. And here's LeBou in. And out of the game is Steve Dean, who had been in momentarily. Of course, they're out of the wishbone now, being behind. They're into the eye, the eye with the split uh, slot man. And LeBou is now going to be the slot man on the right with Wheeler outside of him. And they have the other wide out Wood on the other side. Here's Davis back to throw. Lots of time. He's away up the middle. Overthrown. Intercepted at the 41. Auburn's ball. David Langner. David Langner at the 41. And Auburn only has to run out 49 seconds. It was intended for Wayne Wheeler, and again, the entire Auburn team has jumped on David Langner. David Langner has had a big day. He has run two punts in. Now, what do we got? They're just trying to get the rest of the Auburn team off the field so they can complete the game. I was looking to see if there was any flag, and there is not. Auburn first and 10 on their own 42. Gusty, your mouth will work. It's, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I just... I just want to say that a lot of people don't feel like defense can win football games anymore. They think you've got to have a real fine offense, and that's true. But my goodness, this Auburn defense, I don't even know how to describe them, but they won this football game today. It's well, been a tremendous football game for them. They won it if they can hold the ball for 49 seconds. And Alabama, I will remind you, has all three timeouts remaining. Now they penalized Auburn five yards for delay of game. For delay of game, and they're going to—they actually penalized them six yards from the 42 back to the 36. But we won't quibble or, or quarrel with that. All right, new fullback is Rusty Fuller. The clock is the most important thing. 49 seconds. Alabama with three timeouts remaining, and Randy Walls just falls down at the 35, and Alabama runs. Up. And let's see—are they going to use a timeout? They are. The clock is down to 42 seconds. Alabama calls timeout. Timeout on the field to score Auburn 17, Alabama 16. Jim Short of Jim Short Ford. 
and we can offer you the best price on a new 73 Ford because we're selling more Fords than any other dealer. Wide, using as much clock as he can, and he got uh, maybe a yard gained as he rolled to his right, and again, Alabama stops the clock, 36 seconds. That was a six-second play, and it's going to be third down and nine as, uh, or no, uh, the f five yard penalty, I'm forgetting, third and 14, excuse me, as Randy Walls has got the ball up to the 36 yard line. And uh, third and 15 will make it. Clock stopped with 36 seconds. Alabama has one timeout remaining. One timeout left. And I see the Auburn coaches from the press box are now down there. They have gotten the elevator and gotten down to the sideline. 36 seconds remaining. I don't know. We're not going to take our break, obviously. We've had plenty, and Gusty, I don't know. I'm afraid to leave. Something might happen. Here we go. Time back in. Third down. Auburn with 15 to go. And let's see what Randy Walls is going to do here. He's going to run wide. Coming here to the right side, trying to use as much clock as he can. Down he goes on the 32-yard line, and Alabama uses their last timeout. Stopping the clock with 28 seconds. It will be fourth down, and David Beverly will come on to punt for Auburn. And you know what every Alabama fan in the house is thinking right now. They're thinking if Auburn can block kicks, they can block kicks. And they're sending in a couple of little speedsters, Mike Washington and Tyrone King. Washington a sophomore, King a freshman, and both of them have great speed. They're going to put them on each end of the line and send them after David Beverly. All right, 28 seconds. Alabama out of timeouts now. Auburn leading 17 to 16, and Beverly waiting on the 18-yard line. All right, never will Steve Taylor make a bigger snap. It's a good snap. Beverly's kick is away. Here is Robin Carey catching it, dropping it at the 28. He's in trouble. He's down. It was McKinney. He's down back at the 27-yard line. Clock stops with 19 seconds. And that was Bob Ferrier and Lee Gross and hold the phone on a penalty flag back upfield. Gary, I believe it's Alabama offsides. I guess I'm wrong all the time, but it looked like they got a quick jump. Well, let's see. Uh, they appear to be talking to the Auburn captain, but let's hold the phone. 19 seconds on the clock. Offside against Auburn. Declined by Alabama. They don't want to let him kick it again. Alabama doesn't want to use up any more time. 19 seconds. He signaled offside against Auburn. I would have thought Alabama might have wanted another try to block one, but they don't. First and 10 at the 27. They'd rather go. They're in a, oh, in a pro set, a wide out formation. Wide outs either side. Terry Davis straight back wanting to throw. Reich has got him. Eddie Welch back on the 24. Alabama out of timeouts. 12, 11, 10, 9. Alabama has no timeouts remaining. Auburn getting up as slowly as they can. And here, three, two. Will they get a snap? They got a snap. They threw it out of bounds. The clock is out. It's zero, and Auburn is one. The Auburn Tigers have defeated the University of Alabama 17 to 16 in one of the stirring comebacks that you ever want to see in the history of football. Auburn down 16 to nothing at one point with only one first down in the first half, and the Tigers completely turned it around with a field goal, two blocked punts, and the two point afters with it for a stirring upset of the number two ranked team in the country, handing Alabama their first loss since the Orange Bowl game against Nebraska and their first regular season loss since Auburn beat them here at Legion Field two years ago. This victory will have to go down as one of the all time fantastic Auburn wins. There's probably never been a bigger one and it'll go down in the record book. Gusty, I guess when we're old and gray, there's still going to be days that we're going to think back on the 1972 at Legion Field when Auburn came from 16 to nothing to win. How can you even describe it, Gary? You know, I know there are going to be some tears in the Alabama dressing room. They played a great football game, but I know there are going to be some tears in an Auburn dressing room, too. Tears of joy. Well, Tremendous victory. what a fantastic football game. What a fantastic football game. That's the end of the football game. We'll be back with a summary and the statistics in a moment. Your final score, the Auburn Tigers 17, the University of Alabama 16. Once again, this is Gary Sanders with Gusty Yearout at Legion Field. And Gusty, as we stand here in uh, our press box 
at Legion Field and look across at the Auburn section, I'd say less than 5% of the Auburn fans have even started to leave. I see a few orange and blue banners starting out, but the rest of them are just sitting in their stands. They're probably like you and I. They're looking at each other and, and really wanting to know if you can believe what you see and certainly remember what you see. And I guess you want to savor the moment. Just stay here and enjoy one of the most stirring comebacks, I think, in the history of college football. Well, you know, Gary, uh, they made odds about this football game. They said Auburn couldn't win it. They, they made Alabama a 16-point favorite, but what would the odds have been in the fourth quarter with something like eight or nine minutes left and Auburn behind 16 to nothing? To come back and win this football game, they would have just been astronomical. This is this is sensational. The, the fans, very few of them have left. There are a lot of Alabama people leaving now, but the Auburn fans, as you say, are still in the crowd and still waving their little banners over there. <laughs> well, I tell you, I have introduced Coach Jordan at uh, speeches on two or three occasions lately as the coach of the year and dad blame it if there's a coach of the year award anywhere in the world that this man doesn't win for this season uh, they ought to they ought to do away with the dad blame award because here is a guy who has has done a fantastic job mitchell and langer on the line of scrimmage coming from either side to try to block the kick auburn trying to go after it here's a snap they got it block kick Balls back to the 25, picked up on the bounce at the 25 yard line, and in for a touchdown is David Langer. One blocked kick was incredible. Who would have ever thought the Amazons would do it twice? On the far right, Roger Mitchell on the left, and Auburn is again going after the kick, as you might imagine. Greg Gant standing on his own 30, Auburn will try to block it. Auburn going after it. Here's a good snap. It is blocked! It is blocked! It's caught on a run! It's caught on a run! He's going to score! The extra point was good. The Tigers led 17 to 16 and held on to win one of the most amazing games in Auburn history. First, David, I want to ask you where you were when the second punt uh, was taken in. I had gone down to the Auburn sideline and was standing among the football players. And as strange as it may seem, they knew. If they could ever force Alabama into punt formation, they knew they were going to do it again. Mm -hmm. It was a twilight zone of existentialism. There was no doubt in anyone's mind. Now, years and years later, well, yeah, that's how that, that's what you say now looking back. Mm -hmm. But had you been there for that instant and that moment, once Mike Neal broke through the line and, and made the tackle that set up the punting situation, Auburn players knew. Coach Paul Davis, the architect of so many great Auburn defenses, mm -hmm. and the, the person who coached the kicking game, he had found a weakness in the Alabama punt protection, obviously. But it was beyond X's and O's. Mm -hmm. This was a team of destiny, and they knew, and the people around them knew that this was about to happen. It was the eeriest feeling I've had mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. is being on that Auburn sideline at that particular time. And the second punt return was such a tremendous climax, the extra point, which was so vital to victory, was almost anticlimactic. Nobody really thought about the extra point. David Langner said in years to come, he was on the, on the bench and looked up and wondering what all the cheering was about when Gardner kicked the extra point. He thought it was tied 17 to 17. And he said, we didn't come here to tie Alabama. We came here to beat Alabama. <laughs> and he didn't think they had but a minute and 34 seconds to do it. I wonder what was going through Gardner Jett's mind, but obviously he was up to it. I think it's important to note, Phil, that the three players who had key roles in this particular game were all walk-ons. Three of the players, certainly a lot of the Scotland Jett kicked the extra point that won it. Roger Mitchell blocked the extra point. And then little Bill Newton from Fayette, Alabama, who nobody wanted, walked to Auburn and wound up making what may well be the biggest individual play in Auburn history. And his statistics can be. Look at the uh, disparity in Auburn's offenses compared to Alabama's. And yet the final score was one that uh, will always be remembered. 17-16, or punt, Bama punt. It was not one of Auburn's greatest games, but it certainly was one of Auburn's greatest victories. This is Phil Snow with David Housel. Join us again for another of